What's going on everyone? It's the fake weeb here and today we're going to be discussing the connection between Angel and Sukuna. With the release of chapter 199, we were told that Angel is hunting down for Sukuna since he's known as the Fallen One or the Disgraced One in Viz's translation. Now what does that exactly mean? What is the history between these two characters? We're going to dive into all that discussion but first shout out to Multiwar and Isaiah for commenting on my chapter review video as reading their comments inspired me to discuss about Sakuna, Angel, and all that lore stuff, so yeah, without wasting any more time, let's get on with it. Okay, so first and foremost, we need to talk about how important these two characters really mean to each other. Because when Angel first mentions that she needs to kill the disgraced one, Sakuna instantly pulls Yuji into his innate domain and informs him that he indeed is the disgraced one. Now, the reason why this is really important is because Sukuna very rarely brings Yuji into his own innate domain, especially if it's just to say something to him. From what we've seen, Yuji's only been inside of Sukuna's innate domain two times. The only other time is when they formed that binding vow together. Normally, Sukuna would just pop a mouth on his body and tell Yuji whatever he wants to tell him. Usually, he just teases him. But the fact that he didn't want to do that here, instead pull Yuji into his domain, right after Angel disclosed who she's hunting for and telling Yuji in secret that he is the fallen one implies that Sukuna is genuinely trying to hide or avoid Angel in some way. It's likely that Sukuna fears what would happen to him if Angel knew that he resides inside of Yuji's body because obviously if Yuji died from Angel then Sukuna would die as well. But we know that Yuji is okay to die as long as it succeeds into defeating Sukuna. Sukuna. He's the main antagonist after all. So, did Sukuna screw up by revealing to Yuji that he is the disgraced one as Yuji would tell Angel right after? This is something that myself and a lot of people in the comment section were wondering about when the chapter came out, but I thought about it even more and reread the beginning parts of Jujutsu Kaisen and nah, Sukuna didn't actually screw up. The reason why Yuji wouldn't tell Angel that Sukuna is inside him is because Yuji doesn't have all all of Sukuna's fingers yet. As Gojo mentioned at the very beginning of the series, Yuji dying now would be a waste since there's no guarantee that a vessel capable of controlling Sukuna will ever come around again. So the goal was to always have Yuji consume all 20 of Sukuna's fingers and then die right after as the curse inside him would truly die as well. If Yuji were to tell Angel right now that the fallen one is inside him, then Angel would attempt to kill Yuji on the spot, as, you know, she said, no matter the cost, he must be slaughtered. And Yuji dying at only 15 fingers wouldn't fully get rid of Sukuna since the presence or remnants of him would still live on with his other five fingers. And I think Sukuna already knew that, which is why he comfortably told Yuji that he's the fallen one. This also favors Sukuna because if Angel knew that Sukuna was in Yuji's body, it would have ruined Sukuna's plan since an aspect of Sukuna's plan is to be become free of Yuji's body or something along those lines. And yeah, I mean, it's interesting that Angel poses a huge threat to Sukuna now and how they have some sort of personal history with each other. But what is that personal history? Well, let's first take a look at their names. Shout out to Glokin on Twitter as he mentioned that Sukuna, Angel, and Tengen all share the same Japanese kanji in their names. So there's definitely some sort of past connection with the three of them, all kind of knowing each other, but I also think it's more than that, whereas these three characters share the same theme of transcending from once being a human, as in none of them are really human anymore. We see that Tengen has evolved more into a cursed spirit than a human since he failed to merge with a star plasma vessel back in the Gojo Past arc, and this caused Tengen to essentially become a large hive mind, kind of like existing as a collective entity rather than being at one specific location. And Angel, we obviously see that she has wings and the halo ring on top of her head, so she's definitely not human. And Sakuna is obviously not a human either, but we know that he was once a human before becoming the King of Curses. Now, considering that Angel follows a god, I kind of hope we don't get some sort of ultimate god-like entity in the series. I think with the way Angel mentioned God saying, oh, it's just the name I give to my beliefs, pay it no mind.
mind. It kind of implies that, yeah, there's probably no exact godlike figure who owns it all in the Jujutsu Kaisen universe, but again, rather just the name of Angel's beliefs slash leader. And I mentioned in my chapter review video that Tengen could be the supposed god that she's referring to, because we know that Tengen has been praised as a god before, back in the old ages. Heck, even in the modern age, some of his religious groups were still active back then, which is surprising since it's been over thousands of years. Now, some of you might say, hey, fake weeb, how could Tengen be the god if Angel said that reincarnation is against God's rule? Because Tengen in general merges with star plasma vessels, hence he goes against that very rule. Well, I actually went back to read the hidden inventory arc and I noticed that Tengen's believers slash followers didn't actually want him to merge with anybody. They believed that him merging with another star plasma vessel would ruin the soil of his purity. This was the whole point of why the Time Vessel Association group wanted to kill Riko Amane, to avoid emerging with Tengen. For a quick reminder, Riko was the star vessel and the Time Vessel Association group was one of the groups that worshipped Tengen as their god. I guess Tengen's followers loved him so much that they inadvertently think merging is worse for his health, that something like that is considered a sin. So this could explain why Angel thinks that certain way of reincarnation too. But even if Tengen is not the god that Angel is referring to, I still do believe that all three of them are connected to each other. Their events would also sort of match the story's timeline. Hear me out, right? We know that Tengen was the first person to preach the foundation of Jujutsu back in the Nara period. Now, the Nara period was before the Heian period, and the Heian period was known as the Golden Age of Jujutsu. This is when many sorcerers were at war with each other and when Sakuna became the King of Curses. Now, since that era was known as the Golden Age of Jujutsu, it kind of makes you wonder, was Jujutsu popular back before the Heian period? Well, no, not really, because as stated, Tengen had only laid the foundations of Jujutsu just a period before. And with his renowned teachings of cursed energy or whatnot, Tengen would spread out many followers and religious groups that worshipped him as their deity. Deity is another word or term for god or goddess. Now, what if Angel and Sukuna were also followers of Tengen? I mean, Tengen knew who Angel was before our crew joined the culling game. Despite Tengen being a barrier user, it was stated in the story that he couldn't look into the insides of the culling games because the colony barriers were rejecting him. So the fact that he expected or knew that someone named Angel would be in the culling games and knew what time period she's from alongside knowing what her curse technique is without being able to look into the culling game barriers tells us that they for sure might have known each other from the past, hence Angel potentially being a fellow follower. As for Sukuna, well, what if when Sukuna was a human, Sukuna was learning the knowledge of Jujutsu through Tengen's teachings back in the Nara period, but then sometime after, Sukuna understood more beyond Tengen's knowledge. I say this because Sukuna once said in one of his fights that he knows what true Jujutsu is, something that humans, sorcerers, nor cursed spirits will ever understand. This might sound a bit vague, but I think his domain expansion, how it's like painting an actual art piece into reality, is just a direct example of one's mindset knowing what true Jujutsu is. It's what separates him from the others and shows why he's on a different level than anyone else. Now, I'm not sure if this is an even bigger stretch to say, but what if Sukuna became the first ever cursed spirit, metaphorically why he's depicted as the one who had fallen from grace. That would be some deep backstory stuff, but there might be plot holes to that. I mean, during Sukuna's fight with Jogo, Sukuna had seemed to separate himself from humans, sorcerers, and cursed spirits. Like, he may have not been the first cursed spirit ever, but maybe the first being to reach a new height of Jujutsu, hence how he turned into an absolute monster. So again, if Tenkin was essentially the first person who started Jujutsu, then Sukuna as a human must have found what true Jujutsu is and evolved into the King of Curses in the Heian era, which again is one era just before Jujutsu was actually introduced. And with his new sense of enlightenment, Sukuna used it for evil, slaughtering many sorcerers in the past and thus why he had fallen from grace. This also kind of fits in with how the Culling Games is almost like a recreation 
creation of the Heian era. As when Kenjaku began the culling games at the end of Shibuya, he said something like, Oh, do you hear me, Sukuna? It's starting once again, the world of Heian, the golden age of Jujutsu. And yeah, it's pretty accurate, as we're seeing many sorcerers, old and new, fight each other to the death in order to gain points and stay alive in the culling games. What makes this even more true is that Sukuna might be free by the end of this arc and fight many of the remaining strongest sorcerers in the culling game, just like he did before back in the Hien era, as Sukuna is the metaphorical bomb that Reggie was speculating about. A great YouTuber by the name of Zonin made a really well formatted video on this topic, so if you want to check that out, then I'll have it linked in the description, but yeah, let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of all this? We may or may not be getting a Sukuna backstory very soon, but if we ever do, then I hope some of the things I mentioned in this video turn out to be true, because it does seem like a lot of things could tie up together. Though, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching another one of my Jujutsu Kaisen videos. It's been the Fake Weeb, and I'm out. Peace.